I can see then and sorry, I forgot to record. Anyway, go ahead, my Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, well, it talks to my ears the same. <laughs> There's a kind of progress. Okay, sorry. And so it is amazing how um you know, if we pray and we have faith, we can move mountains. We can do it. And and I'm just so amazed all the time of seeing miracles around myself um, just because we pray and we have the faith. So um, that's my latest example of of the power of faith and the power of prayer. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Sorry, really quick. I forgot to record. So we just went through a little bit of gratitude, a couple more, uh, talked about some things we're grateful for, and then we did this breathing. And then we're just, we spent, a, we had a focus on gratitude for seeing the Lord's hand in our life. And she was just sharing how she has seen the Lord's hand in her life. And I was sharing how I had seen the Lord's hand in my life and how he, that he know, that I know that he is telling all of us that that you are of infinite worth and that he loves you so much and that he wants you to share your gifts because he's been sharing that with me specifically and i know that he wants you sharing it with me so that i will share it with you i know that you are here for a reason and so thank you so much for sharing that marival it's beautiful uh i'm so i've talked a lot about this talk uh, the power of spiritual momentum and it was the april sunday morning general conference talk by president russell m nelson and i was just sharing that i've i've talked to you guys a whole bunch about it i've read it a whole bunch of times i've listened to it a whole bunch of times and i saw the lord's hand in my life again when someone from our bishopric called me and asked me to speak in church on this talk again and as I was studying it, I learned even more about myself and what a blessing that is. And so I invite all of you to, to call upon the Holy Spirit to just be part of your life and be part of your experience right now that he will teach you as I'm talking. And so he, as he opened up his talk, it was this beautiful. It was beautiful. He said, I pray daily that you will be protected from the fierce attacks of the adversary and have the strength to push forward through, through whatever challenges you face. And, and, and he asked us to end conflicts that are raging in your heart, your home, and your life. And, you know, another thing my sister was sharing with me, I think it's called Enneagram. And she was saying she's taken the test and she's paid for the paid one uh, where it breaks things down for her. And she and she was saying that she thinks that we're a lot in maybe not exactly, but a lot in the same in the number eight, which is a challenger. And they like to and their fear is not being able to control the situation. And I realized that. I think a lot of the reason why I feel so much anger right now is it's triggering me and from things from my childhood where I felt so out of control of the situation uh, when there was some abuse or there was uh, where I didn't have my needs met or my sisters didn't have their needs met or whatever the case was and I had no when I was a child and I had no control of the situation well as a parent having children and I ask them to do something, or I ask them not to do something, and they do what they want. And feeling so out of control over my home and my things and my life that brings anger. And so it is up to me to end that conflict and end that and to give that to the Lord daily. And so, it's, and he says it can be painfully difficult to let go of anger that feels so justified. It could seem impossible to forgive those destructive actions who have hurt the innocent, yet the Savior admonished us to forgive all men. We are followers of the Prince of Peace. Now more than ever, we need the peace only he can bring. How can we can ex expect to exist in the world, peace exists to exist in the world when we are not individually seeking peace and harmony? And so he asks, he pleads with us that we will end personal conflicts 
that are personally raging in our home, our hearts and in our lives. And then he, he gives this story about this basketball game and how they went back and forth until right before the halftime. And then right before the halftime, they, one of the teams made a beautiful three point shot. And then on the way back, that same team stole the ball and made another shot. So they went into the halftime, the end of the locker room with that powerful surge of momentum. And then they went on to win the game. And so he talks about how, how momentum is a powerful concept. And so he asked, how can we ignite that spiritual momentum? Because really momentum can swing either way. It can swing to the negative or the darker side, or it can swing to that light to the to Christ. And we have never needed positive spiritual momentum more than we do now to counteract the speed, which evil and darker signs of the times are intensifying. Positive spiritual momentum will keep us moving forward admit, amid the fear and uncertainty created by all of these things, the tsunamis, the pandemics, the uh, volcanic eruptions, and, and war and armed hostilities. Spiritual momentum can help us withstand the relentless, wicked attacks of the adversary and thwart his efforts to erode our personal spiritual foundation. Many actions can ignite this spiritual momentum. Things like obedience, love, humility, surface, gratitude, which we talk about a lot on here, especially on gratitude. And, but he gives us five specific ways, which again, we've talked about a lot on here. The first one is to get on the covenant path and stay there. The second is to find joy in daily repentance because it, there is so much joy there. The third is to learn about God and how he works. And then the fourth is seek and expect miracles. And the fifth is to end conflict in our lives. So the first one to end, to get on the covenant path and stay there. As I was talking about before, I realized as I was preparing this talk that, that my thoughts that were not, that were so, so for the past seven years, I've been, I've been, I've had like, it's not been totally consistently down, of course, but it's been a lot down, a little bit up and then a lot down. And from postpartum depression, crazy, every, all of that stuff. And I felt abandoned by the Lord. So I wasn't as consistent in my scripture study. I wasn't, I had lots of fearful thoughts circulating in my head and I ruminated and focused on those thoughts. And that's choosing, even though it wasn't consciously done, I chose fear over faith. And that's created the results in my life that I have right now. And so, we, as we get on the covenant path, so he talks about, we enter the, the covenant path by being baptized and making our first covenant with God. And so as, and so each week when we partake of the sacrament, we take of those emblems, then we promise again to take upon the name of savior upon us and remember him and keep him, keep his commandments. And in return, we are promised to always have the spirit of the Lord to be with us. And so then later we can make, we have the opportunity to make more, more covenants in the temple with either, either even greater promises. And that allows, that gives us access to that godly power. And so, and again, I've talked about this too. The, I, this is my opinion. I don't have scriptures to back this up, but I, I feel that as we take partake of the sacrament, that we are physically taking if when we when we are daily repenting and we are worthily partaking of that sacrament then we are physically taking on his body his flesh and his blood and then as we are feasting upon the words of Christ and truly finding that joy in those words then our, and our minds are becoming the minds of Christ then we are we are filled with that we are filled with his light we are filled with the tongue of angels we can speak the tongue with the tongue of angels as it talks about in alma 32 uh 31 verse 13 and 32 verse 3 and <clears throat> as and as we do that we are given more and more the power of christ because our mind is aligned with him we are focused on the faith and not the fear and so that is why right now i am inviting you to join me to read the Book of Mormon in 60 days, starting today. And I, I suggest that you that each of you make a floor and a ceiling 
a floor of the a floor and a ceiling of that goal meaning you know days that you're busy and you just you just weren't able to make the time to sit down and read those with real with all the intent you at least can listen to them and I'll and I will put the links to that so you can listen to you can listen to the scriptures for any and this is for anyone who whether you are members of my church or the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or not I invite you to, whether you've been having challenges with your faith, with, with faith in our prophet or faith in Jesus Christ or faith in God, I invite you to read with us, to study with us and share what you're learning and, and just try, experiment as it talks about now in the 32, experiment upon the word and see if as you are feasting upon these words, if you're given that godly power. And so... I will post, let me write down what I'm even saying. Uh, so I need to post a link to listen. And a guide of what scriptures to read for the day. So a 60 day. Okay, so I will post those and and then so I invite you to to go along this process with me and and really in discovering the joy of daily repentance and reading and and feasting upon the words of Christ and allowing his words to be in you because we're still I will still be reading what we're covering in in Sunday school for the Old Testament. I will still be reading that as well. But this is in addition to, and so on those days, maybe as a, as a floor, your support of that goal, you can say, okay, I, I won't be able to sit down and read. So I'll just listen as I'm doing whatever it is that day. And then as you're sealing your ideal, so your ideal might be to sit down and to really ponder, have time to ponder and pray as you're reading. And so you have that ideal and you have that floor as your supports on those other days, you won't be able to get that done. And so in, go, sorry, going back to daily repentance, Alma taught that we should preach nothing, save it were, for, were repentance and faith on the Lord. So if we're focused, if our minds are circulating and focusing on, on repentance and faith on the Lord and that joy that that cleansing shower of repentance brings us, that we we are not only confidently accountable to jesus christ but we but this is the key to our progress that this pure faith keeps us moving on the covenant path as president nelson says and he says in james 2 it says that that faith without works is dead because faith you you when you have faith you will act uh, because the idiot later in the chat, a little bit later in the chapter, he says the devils also believe and tremble, you know, they, but they don't repent. They don't do anything about their belief. So when you believe something and you act on it, that is faith. And that's why faith, hope, and uh, um, that's why belief and hope maybe proceed faith. Actually, I don't know. I'm going to take that back. I don't know about that. Uh, and so he said, Satan, so President Nelson says, Satan delights in your misery. Cut it short. Cast his influence out of your life. Repentance is, is, is the way that we can cut that misery short that Satan is seeking to put upon us. And he talks about, oh, I guess that's in the next section. Uh, start today to experience the joy of putting off the natural man. The Savior always loves us, but especially when we repent. And he said that even though the, the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, my kindness shall not depart from, me, from thee. So if you feel like you've strayed way too far off, off the covenant path for too long and there's no way to return, that simply is not true. He says, please contact your Bishop of Branch President. He's the Lord's agent and will help you experience the joy and relief of repenting. And he, he says, you know, this is a caution. You, the, the covenant path and re returning to it and repenting, that can feel sometimes like a steep climb. 
And he said, this ascent, however, is designed to test us, teach us, refine our natures, and help us become saints. It is only, it is the only path that leads to exaltation. And King Benjamin, the prophet, at the beginning of the book of Mosiah, he said, blessed and happy are the state of those who keep the commandments of God. For behold, they are blessed in all things, both temporal and spiritual. So you have the temporal. So as we do this, you'll be blessed temporally in your physical finances, your physical life, and spiritually. And if they hold out faithful to the end, they're received into heaven and dwell with God in a state of never-ending happiness. Our thoughts, are they fear or faith-based? If they are not, that is something that we have the opportunity to repent of, to become better, to really, and as we feast upon the words of Christ, it's so much easier for our minds to be based in faith. And so then it has, in his third suggestion, learning about God and how he works, he said, one of the greatest challenges today is distinguishing between the truth of God and the counterfeits of Satan. And he gives the example and that's why the Lord warned us to pray always that we may conquer Satan and escape the hands of the servants of Satan that do uphold his work. And so that is why he gives the example of Moses. And so Moses, Moses, he was taught directly by God face to face. And then immediately Satan comes and Satan, because he had just been taught by God, he'd been filled with his presence and his words, then he was able to immediately distinguish who are you? And he knew that he was Satan. And so he said, he commanded him to depart. And he said, depart from me, Satan, for this God will I only worship. And he kept persisting. And so he called upon God to work and he called upon God for help. And Moses received divine strength and rebuked the evil one. And so we can detect Satan just as Moses did. And just, uh, and we can have his words in us and be filled with his words and know what to say and be the Holy Spirit can guide us what words we can say to receive his strength as we feast upon the words of Christ. And then he, he gives this, uh, this warning. He says that with frightening speed, a testimony that is not nourished daily by the good word of God can crumble. Thus the antidote to Satan's scheme is clear. We need daily experiences, worshiping the Lord and studying his gospel. I plead with you to let God prevail in your life. Give him a fair share of your time. As you do, notice what happens to your positive spiritual momentum. And so that is how we seek and expect miracles, which is his, his number four point. If I did I say that right before? I might, I might not have. So this is number four, seek and expect miracles. Every book of scripture, you look through the scriptures, every book of scripture gives us and demonstrates how willing examples and demonstrates how willing the Lord is to intervene in our lives and intervene in the lives of those who believe in him. And so Moroni in the book of Moroni, he tells us God is a God of miracles. Have miracles ceased? No, they have not ceased uh, for those who believe in him. And he, and he said, the Lord will bless you with miracles. If you believe in him, doubting nothing. Do the spiritual work to seek miracles. Prayerfully ask God to help you exercise that kind of faith. I promise that you can experience for yourself that Jesus Christ giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. Okay. If you feel you have no strength, because sometimes I feel that way. When you feel that you have no might, he increases your strength. And so as we go through whatever experiences, and for me, like I told you, I had so deep dark such deep dark depression postpartum depression and sometimes that has then that has created these physical things in me like super low iron in my blood and Hashimoto's and whatever but guess what Christ conquereth all things and he said that to them that have no might he increases strength Few things will accelerate your spiritual momentum more than realizing the Lord is helping, helping you to move a mountain in your life. Do you want to move miracles? Because here it is. He's inviting you. The fifth thing that he's asking us to do to, to gain this, this increased spiritual momentum is to end conflict in our personal lives. Exercise humility, courage, and strength required to both forgive and seek forgiveness. 
the Lord has promised that if we forgive men their trespasses, our heavenly father will also forgive us. And so I don't know if you, I'm sure a lot of you have probably heard of Ho'oponopono, which is the Hawaiian practice of, I'm sorry, you either spit, you say some, you say that you say this to someone's spirit or you say that it to them directly, whatever feels more honoring to you. But you say, I love you, please, or I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me, I forgive you, thank you, I love you, whatever. And say those words have power. And if you listen to the background of Ho'oponopono, uh, the, there was a, I don't know what he was, I don't know if he was a counselor or what, but he was, at, they were having a really hard time maintaining staff in a mentally insane criminal jail, hospital, whatever it was, a combination of the two. And so they invited this man and he said, I will only come if you let me do it my way. And so what he did is he would, he would use this Ho'oponopono practice with the inmates. So he would speak to their pictures and just their images and tell them, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And he would do this with them repeatedly, and, you know, and it, and it had completely changed that, that mentally insane institution so that they were able to keep staff so that they were like completely changed it. Words have power. And President Nelson says, I invite you to seek and end a personal conflict that has weighed you down. And so this was when he was inviting the, us to do this in two weeks. So I invite you to do this in the next two weeks to seek an end to a personal conflict that has weighed you down. Could there be a more fitting act of gratitude to Jesus Christ for his atonement? If forgiveness presently seems impossible, plead for the power of the power through the atoning blood of Jesus Christ to help you. As you do so, I promise personal peace and a burst of spiritual momentum. Those, and he says, those who follow Jesus Christ can have access to his healing, his strengthening and his redeeming power. We all need forgiveness, all of us, even if we have not done these, these awful, horrible, heinous, heinous, I don't even know how to say that word, uh, sins, then we still have committed sins where we need forgiveness. And as we forgive, we are healed in our own hearts. And he gives us the promise that as we, we commit and work on these Five, these five things for our spiritual momentum, which is to get on the covenant path and stay there, to discover the joy in daily repentance, learn about God and how he works, seek and expect miracles and end conflict in our lives, that I promise you the ability to move forward on the covenant path with increased momentum, despite whatever obstacles you faith you face. I promise you greater strength to resist temptation, more peace of mind, freedom from fear, and greater unity in your families. Jesus Christ is our savior. God lives. He will help you and he will help me. And I bear these things. I bear testimony of these things. And even though I went long today, I love you. Thank you. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you have any other comments, Maribel? Wow, you are so powerful. <laughs> it is amazing. Yeah, I did love that talk. Um, and I do believe in miracles uh, in my life. And, and I know that we have to live by faith. And, and yeah, that power that you have is just so incredible. Thank you, Maribel. Um, so I, yeah. I love it. <laughs> I totally love that power when you talk so powerful. It's, it's just amazing because it's a testimony is so strong and and help others to to feel it too thank you thank you so much there's a quote that you just reminded me of Marival and Ezra Taft Benson said men and women and he was a prophet of God in these latter days uh in the 80s and 90s 80s yes 80s okay. yes Men and women who turn their lives over to God will find out that he can make a lot more out of their lives than they can. He will deepen their joys, expand their vision, quicken their minds, strengthen their muscles, lift their spirits, multiply their blessings, increase their opportunities, comfort their souls, 
raise up friends and pour out peace. Whoever loses his life to God will find he has eternal life. And so I invite you to lose your life to God in, and join with me in this 60 day challenge. And I will post those things to help, to help you and to help me. I invite you to share. Please share your experiences and the things that you learn as you, as you feast upon the words of Christ. And so you have a wonderful week and I will see you next Monday.